Hunter Heidi from Lumpology.com and welcome back. Um, this is probably the most requested BGE tutorial in existence right now, so um, I thought uh, let's be unique and make it. So um, welcome back. Um, this is going to be really fun. Um, if you don't like two-part tutorial series, I'm s series, I am sorry you cannot take this because this is going to be a two-part tutorial ser series. So in the first part, we're going to cover all the add-ons and stuff we're going to be using, and we're going to make the game itself inside of Blender, and um, then in the second part, we're going to actually port it to an APK and install it on our device and do stuff like that. Um, so um, I'm sorry, a lot of add-ons, well not actually, only one add-on is going to be needed, but we're also going to need a semi-big SDK, uh, an app for your phone, and um, uh, you're going to need to uh, sign on to an online thing for a simple development. Uh, it's only going to get more complicated from here on out. Um, logic bricks are no longer usable, so you're going to have to report your game a little differently. Um, so let's just get right into it. Uh, I'm going to open up Mozilla Firefox to give you the brief. Um, you're going to need the latest version of Blender or just get a lower version of something else. Um, you, I'm going to be using Blender 2.77, uh, not 2.77a, I'm just not really willing to update just for that extra letter. Um, yes, so get Blender 2.77a, uh, I'm going to close this, and now we're going to need to get the Blend for Web add-on. Add -on. So, uh, props to the Blend for Web people. These are some. This is a truly amazing add-on. It it brings a whole new level to web development, and um, I'll show you in a little bit why you're going to need this. So, get the uh, start by getting the Blend the Blender add-on. Uh, it's three megabytes. It's actually kind of nice that they tell you this. It'll take. It took me a few minutes to download. Take like five minutes to download, though. That does seem a bit much for three megabytes. I don't know. My internet's just bad. Okay, so once you have got that, okay, you're once you've uh, downloaded it to a location, uh, you got it here. You're going to want to uh, extract all and extract it into a folder. So uh, I'm just going to do that right now. That'll take a second. Hurry up! There we go. So here's the add-on. Uh, you're gonna take the one that's inside. So we got the folder here, I'm going to click into it, I'm right click this, uh, and I'm going to, I'll cut and copy mine. And now we're going to, I'm just going to scroll back and I'm going to go to, you. And if you're using Windows 10 it'll be a little harder, you're going to probably want to type in C colon enter. And then it'll bring you to this file and then you're going to want to go to program files. If you're using a 32-bit computer go to the program files x86, but I'm going to go to mine because I'm using a 64-bit. Um, well, technically it's a laptop, but here, um, scripts, I'm going to go to add-ons, and we're going to right-click, and you would paste it here. I have already got mine installed, so I'm not going to do that. Once that is on, you're going to want to open Blender. You're going to want to wait just a second. I'm loading the Blend for Web add-on right now. Okay, and you're going to want to go to File, User Preferences, and you're going to want to go to, you know, uh, you're going to want to go to Import Export and find the uh, Blend for Web add-on. One second, we got make human import images planes. Blend for Web, here it is. So here, got a few things down here. You won't worry, need to worry about these yet. Leave it at the default port. Um, click Run on Startup. Uh, wait, uh, don't worry about those yet. Just check the add-on. And, um, and then hit Save User Settings. And a new engine will show up. It's the Blend for Web engine. Game engine. It brings a few new settings in. It's a very well done, I have to say, a very well done engine. Um, now you're going to want to go on to here and download the SDK. Or you can purchase the SDK Pro, which could, brings you some awesome features. Um, if you want to support Blend for Web, uh, go to get the SDK Pro. Um, but if you want to uh, just get the free version, go, yeah, that's fine. It works, all, it works fine. But please, um, support them, they're fine. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. This is purely support me loyalty. Um, get the, so I'll just get this. This will take, it's 1.1 gigabytes. It took me actually four hours to download because I was having a really bad day for internet. Uh, but in the end, I got it. And so I'm gonna go back. Um, 
and we're going to, we got the SDK here, you're going to right click and you're going to hit extract all. And what you're going to do is, you're, this is required, so you're going to click the end bit and you're just going to hit backspace all the way until you have nothing but C colon backslash left. Then you're going to hit extract. I've already got mine extract. It'll take a little while, uh, but it'll be worth it. So now I'm going to go back to C colon backslash enter. And I'm here. And your SDK will be right here. So blend for web SDK free. This is what I got. Okay, so let's see how this is going to work. So you're going to want to go to Blender now. And you're going to want to go to the user preferences. You're going to want to go to system. I did that wrong. You're going to want to go to file. And you're going to want to go to scripts. You're going to want to click this button. You're going to want to go all the way out to your C directory. Hit enter. Now you're going to want to find the Blend for Web SDK free. And then you're going to want to hit accept. Save user settings, add ons, go to Blend for Web here. And if this isn't checked, go to for, uh, port 6687 and check run on startup. Uh, just leave the default port and hit run on startup. You have all of this now. So check for updates on startup, no need. Um, I'm just gonna leave mine the way it is. And this is what you got here. So you got the SDK in the directory. So this is all done. Then this, you're gonna close this and you're gonna close Blender. So restart Blender. Sorry, sorry, I hope you're still with me. Um, there we go, so we restarted Blender. And it'll, it'll, it'll take a few seconds for the SDK to load, so your Blender, if you click, your Blender will crash. So, now that it's loaded, I'll click here, and we have the app. We're going to go from Blender Render to Blend for Web. Okay, so um, before we get into the making of our app, our Android app, we're gonna, sh I'm going to show you one other thing we're going to be using. We're going to be using the MIT App Inventor to uh, put our thing together. I've just got a different project loaded, here, loaded up here. Don't worry about this, I'm that bad. it's just a thing I'm working on. Don't worry about it. Uh, so yeah, this is just, um, yeah. Okay, so no we need to worry about that. That's only coming into part two. So we got this. Blend for web is a little different. So you got up here and make sure to start up your server, make sure if it stopped the server. So we have this fast preview and all this stuff here, which is really cool. And they provide a lot of very useful tools. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to, I'm actually gonna, uh, 24 frames per second will do me fine. Timeline range, this will do fine. Okay, you can change this if you need more animation time on your timeline. It's unlikely, but drag up your bottom, bottom panel and we're going to, oh, I'm gonna press Shift S and bring my cursor to the center. Uh, I'm going to delete the camera. No, I'll leave the camera. I'm not even going to delete the, delete the default cube. I'm going to use it. Um, but of course, set up your scene, texture it, do what you need to do. Uh, click this, and we're going to go to the logic editor. Oh wait, we aren't going to go to the logic editor. Dun dun dun. We're going to go to the node editor. This is the little feature. Okay, so you have all these icons down here. Well, you won't have this icon. This is just another add-on. Go to this one. It's a little like node thing. If you need to raise the quality on the video so you can see this, raise the quality on the video so you can see this. Got this, and it's gonna to go right here, and you're gonna add a new node tree. Okay, now we're gonna wanna go up here, and we're gonna go to one of the layers, and we're gonna go to here, and we're gonna click the logic editor, and we're gonna add. Now we got the blend for web logic node tree, and we're gonna move to that. Okay, so because we're doing an Android game, we're going to leave the default entry point. Entry point is like a tap, it's a click, it's a yeah, anything like that. So we got this. This is kind of cool. This is, this is going to be really cool, guys. Um, so, um, oh, PS, we're celebrating 19 subscribers. Wow, you guys are awesome. And um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to click add, and we're going to go to a. I'm going to actually do search because I never seem to be able to find this one. Um, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to do select deprecated, whatever that is. I hope I'm even saying that right. And I'm going to put it here. So um, basically this entry point is just like a um, saying. If This is the click point. So if you, we're going to have it so if you click this cube, it moves. That's going to be the gist of our app. It's going to be amazing. And we're going to click 
And so basically we're going to select the object we want. You, now you can have multiple of these. So basically it's going to detect when we click on this object, this is going to happen. And it's a nice node system, so you can extend this on into infinity. Don't lose your thing. So um, yeah, it's a bit more expansive. It's, a, in my opinion, a little less expansive than the logic editor, but give it enough time, it'll become amazing. And look at all of this stuff. They've worked really hard on this add-on. And so, amazing. So give them a round of applause to the Blend for Web people. So um, go from next, and we're gonna go down to the previous and um, don't check, do not wait. We're gonna select our uh, cube. And okay, we have this done. This is uh, our amazing thing. So um, we got hit. Now we got these ports here. We got hit and miss. So what we're going to add is we're going to add a, we can add a move camera if we like, but I'm not gonna do that. So we're gonna add a, we can do a play sound if we like, but I'm not going to. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna do a play animation. Here it is. So I'm just gonna go over here to this panel. I'm going to drag up my uh, graph editor just for temporarily. We're not gonna be doing anything obligated and I'm just gonna hit I and I'm gonna select the location. Now I'm going to uh, move to, let's go to like 160 and we're gonna move our cube out to 160. And I'm, I'm gonna hit I and I'm going to check the location. Now we have our amazing graph. It'll slow down, it'll slowly speed up, and then slow down. If you don't want it to do that, just tap N, uh, A, deselect, A to reselect, go from here, and check linear. Yes, and that will prevent any of this from happening. Yeah, pretty much. So get used to that. Um, now we're going to uh, want to hit, go when it says hit. So this is if it hits the cube. So if it clicks or if you're in our Android case, taps on it, hit is going to go into the previous. And we're gonna hit object. We're going to select the cube. And the animation is going to be this right here. So my animation is cube action, okay? Um, let's see, what do we want to do? As soon as it's clicked, it's going to be finish reset. So that way we can do it multiple times. And then what we're going to do, so we can, pro oh wait, don't check that, that my bad, is we're going to need a redirect. So I'm going to add a layout, reroute, I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to drag this into the reroute. Uh, there we go. And we're going to add another layout, reroute. And it's going to be here. And so I'm going to drag this into this, and then I'm going to drag it here. So we've got our reroute. Perfect. That's all we need. Now let's test this. So we're going to go into the renders panel here, and we're going to go. No, no. This is why we need the SDK. So, so we have this and stuff. We can actually close this so we don't have a crowded interface. And I'm going to say fast preview. It'll open it up in the web view in your default web browser under localhost. Give it a second for it to show up. Give it a second. It's just, it'll t take less time in the actual thing. This is just because we're doing a direct localhost preview. Oh, it's over there. Uh -huh. Okay, so it'll reset as soon as it gets there. Now, here's how it's gonna work. I click and drag, I can look around, but now, and uh, I can move around, I can scroll in, I can do all this stuff. And so imagine this working on Android. Now I'm gonna, now if I click, the, I tap this. So if I was to tap this in real life, okay, this isn't working, I'm gonna refresh it. This really isn't working very well. What's going on? Okay, these fast previews never work anyways. What we're going to do is we're going to go to file. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna save mine to my desktop. I'm gonna call mine to tutorial. Oh, uh, more things you're gonna need is you're going to need an active website. You can put this on. And okay, I'm going to now hit export. I'm gonna export.html. And I'm gonna put this on my desktop. N yes, and you thought maybe we might do the .json because uh, Android runs JavaScript and stuff like that, but no, we're doing the .html. 
um, this is going to be a bit different than one might expect. So I'm going to double click the HTML file. The blend for web player is going to come up. Oh, my cube's over there. And so basically, we got our app. I can click and drag. Like, why has it been doing this? I won't click anything. Okay, we got it. So yeah, when I click it, when I click it when it was over there, it would move. So actually, it's just a bit buggy for my case. I'm gonna say finish, stop. Oh, why is it over there? Oh, I'm starting it out in the wrong location. My bad, my bad, my bad. There we go, okay. <laughs> that was bad on my part. File, save. And I'm going to do file, and I'm going to export it as an HTML. I'm going to overwrite this HTML file. So if you check the desktop, yeah, it's overwritten it. I'm going to reload the Blender Web, Blender Web Player. So here we got it. Okay, cube starts out. I click it. It moves. Perfect. Amazing. Truly, truly a masterpiece in all regards. For everything. Yeah, so, um, oh, I've got 3D on. I should probably turn that off. It'll reload. Click, it moves. This is our amazing app. So, this has been uh, crazy. Don't forget, file save. Um, and so now we've, we've got our app. Um, we've exported it as an HTML file. Um, possibly do this in one tutorial I don't know um, so we got the HTML file out and so um, this is where I'm going to end part one uh, next part we're gonna convert this into an APK and uh, get this onto our into the proper setup uh, let's see if I can give you a visual explanation of what's gonna happen next uh, let me open up MS paint and we're gonna show you Basically, we're gonna have our web browser. My, I'm gonna put mine onto HTTP colon double forward slash uh, lumpology dot com, and I'm going to. It's probably going to have a slash uh, some web grid name, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put it into the um, file or MIT App Inventor, and we're going to make it open up the website onto our App Inventor and have it run on Android. Now, we're using Blend for Web because Blend for Web has an amazing thing called WebGL. So, all you're going to need to do is keep your website up at all times, and um, yeah, this is going to be um, a pretty cool tutorial. Um, it'll work out a lot better than I'm explaining. Um, uh, so, yeah. Hope this helps, and um, part two should be out by tomorrow. Uh, goodbye.